Welcome to the Parent Life Podcast. My name is Jason Stanley, and I'm the middle school pastor here at Fruit Cove Baptist Church. This is a weekly resource for parents trying to raise their Christian children. This week we have Pastor Tim back with us, and we are very excited to have Pastor Tim. He's been out for a while, and so we're glad to have you back, Good and uh, back. thank you for being here. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to be here. So this week we're going to be talking about adversity, specifically for our children. Uh, one, because they've faced a lot of adversity, uh, whether it be COVID or uh, virtual school or having to switch schools or even changing up school schedule, things like that. So question is, how do we help our children? How do we teach our children about adversity? And what are some practical ways that we can walk them through that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know uh, that the children of this generation um, have have experienced more adversity and more suffering probably than any generation since wartime. Mm. Uh, I think uh, we have just seen an incredible amount of of psychological and emotional stress on our children, um, and um, and again we're seeing that in terms of uptick in mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, I, I read a quote uh, some some time back that that the average child today has more psychiatric issues than a psychiatric patient had in the mid 1940s. Yeah. So, you know, we are we are in an incredible time of stress uh, in our children's lives. And and we as parents, I mean, we we tell children this, we almost blow this past them as an aside like it's something, well, you need to remember this, but we really don't tell them what to do with it, and that is, you know, life's hard. Well, life is hard. Yep. Now what? <laughs> what do we do with that? Uh, there are hardships, there are difficulties. Yes, it is hard to go to school and wear a mask or go to school and wear a mask and people are making fun of you because you wear a mask or go to school and not wear a mask, whatever the situation yeah. is. It, it's, it's putting our children in the line of fire and things that we had never had to deal with as, right. as adults. Uh, and sometimes we feel a little flat-footed about how do we even think about this. We already, and, and uh, our friend uh, Nick Ripken has said this many times, American Christians do not have a well-developed theology of suffering. We don't know how to suffer. No. Uh, we believe that when suffering comes, something's wrong with the world. We are messed up. There's something happening that should not be happening to us. And we pass that philosophy on to our children. Mm -hmm. We pass that belief on that, that if, if you're hurting, if something is not working right, if something is painful, then, then there's something wrong. We got to immediately fix it. The reality is suffering is part of every life. Everyone is going to suffer to some degree. Now, some suffer more so than others, no question. Sure. And the problem, you know, we also have today is with social media being, being as ubiquitous as it is, it's on social media, you, you can look at other people who are experiencing such a wonderful, happy, joyful, fun, and funny life, yeah. and then you look at your life in the mirror and you go, my life's terrible next yeah. to that. Except for, except for we're comparing our reality to their edited version. Yes, exactly media. right. But again, that's not a jump the right. kids make. You, nope. as an adult, look at that and you go, that's what you're doing. But the kids are going, that's their life, this is mine, I'm losing. Right, what's wrong so with me? So there's something wrong that's with right. me. And then you add to that, you know, the, the sense that there are some parents who feel the need or the obligation to, you know, listen, if my kids are hurting, I have got to somehow protect them from mm -hmm. that. Uh, and there's something wrong with me. If my kids are hurting and, 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 I, and I'm not fixing that, right. then there's something wrong with me as a parent. Now, I'm looking bad as a parent because my child's not happy. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, a measurement that we use as to if we're good parents for yeah. how happy our children yes. are. So we and, have to fix it. And, and we have bought, you know, we have bought this line in our culture that everybody's supposed to be happy. We are, you know, we are the happy meal country. You know, everybody <laughs> in America should be happy. We should all, you know, just be smiling and grinning. And, and you know, in comparison to, to the poverty and to the, uh, you know, to the, to the realities of warfare and, and, and persecution and oppression in other countries, the loss of freedom. We are, we should be a very happy, but we, you know what, it's funny, we're not the happiest country on earth. No. We, are, we are not even, uh, I don't, I'm not sure we're even in the top five. Mm. You know, we, we are unhappy people as, as a whole, 
But again, we feel like our children are owed happy. There's something wrong. And, you know, if something goes wrong at school, if our child does not get a grade that we think they ought to get, or if they get picked on, they're getting bullied, we step, we're, we're going to storm in there and we're going to fix that. We're going to make sure our child's happy. We have to protect that. Rather than how do we teach our children to face adversity? How do we teach our children to face suffering as a normal part of life? Mm. You know, because this is also part of education. Part of education is things hurt. If you fall down on the playground because you were standing on the slide and you were fooling around and you weren't sliding down the slide and you fall <laughs> off and you hurt yourself, you got an education. Yeah, you might have also got a skinned up elbow and a, you yeah. know, maybe a, a sore backside. But the reality is you got an education. Yep. That's part of life. That's part of learning. You know, what we want to do is we want to bubble wrap our kids yep. like they look like the Michelin man when they go out to play, you know. No, let them learn that when you hit the concrete, it hurts. Don't hit the concrete anymore. You know, I mean, that's part of education. Don't do that. Oh, that's why that hurt. Don't do that. But we won't let them feel the pain of life. We try to protect them. We try mm -hmm. to we try to pull them back from that. And, and part of that is because we have a defective view of suffering, of the value of suffering. You know, I, I preached on this last week. You know, James said, count on all joy mm -hmm. when, you, when you fall into different kinds of trials and tribulation and, and problems. Count on joy. Well, we don't do that. No, definitely not. It, you, you, should, you need to be able to stand up front and look at people when you say something like that and they look back at you like, what, what book are you reading out of? Mm -hmm. You know, because we all bought the book that said, hey, if you're, you know, if, if you're going through a hard time, you're supposed to be, you know, gritting your teeth and groaning and hurting, not counting it joy. How do you, you know, how do you even make yeah. that sound make sense? Well, and it's like so. you said, like we're, we're still of the mindset that we should never have trials and tribulations in the first place. No, exactly right. And so even there's as something Christians, wrong with us. we right. say, right. well, because we follow right. Jesus, we shouldn't have to deal with this yeah. at all. And how many people just, I mean, how many people have said to me, well, why is God mad at me? Well, God's not mad at you. Right. You know, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you do the math and says, well, I, I'm hurting. God's trying to get even with it. Well, what if God's just letting you, exp this is life, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we don't complain when good things are happening. You know, this, right. that, that's part of life too. But the bad things are also part of life. And to teach our children that there will come times of suffering. And folks, I'm going to tell you something more and more as we move into the end times. We're moving closer and closer into that time that Jesus is going to come back. It's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not sitting around waiting for the news to say, hey, everything's fine now. We're all go, all's, all's well, you know, all clear sounding. That's not going to happen. It's just going to keep getting darker and darker and harder and harder. How are you teaching your child to live in a time like that and a difficulty so now experience? So you, now, you alluded to this earlier about the parent who comes in and swoops in and rescues yes. the kid. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's called a helicopter parent or the lawnmower mm -hmm. parent who just mm -hmm. pushes everything down. What would you suggest to a parent when they see a situation Maybe it's for an older kid with grades or something like that, and they've seen that, okay, this situation is not necessarily going the way that my kid wants it. What do I do? Okay. Well, I think one of the things that we do as parents, and this is hard, is we allow our children, we, we let the train hit our child. Mm. We are, as parents, our parenting philosophy is we need to rescue our child and pull them off the train track instead of letting the train hit them. If the train hits them one time, they'll learn the next time, I don't want the train to hit me again. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just something as simple as uh, if, if your child, uh, uh, you know, is, is being held after school, you know, in, in detention, you know, we, we want to go, well, well, why, you know, what happened? Well, I was talking in class. Well, well don't, you know, you can't go to the teacher and, say, and yell at the teacher to say, why did you let my child go into detention? Well, because I told them to stop talking, and they didn't stop talking, so I held them after school for a little while. Well, what if we, instead of going in and rescuing our child and yelling at the teacher for simply enforcing a rule that he or she has put in place, why don't we just go to our child and say, well, did you like staying for detention? No, mm. I hated it. They made me work and do so. Okay, then... Let's don't do that again. Mm -hmm. Let's don't let the train hit us again. Let's do what the teacher says the next time, and you won't have to stay for detention. Stop rescuing your child from important consequences that are a part of their education. Yeah. That's a part of life. That's a part of the, that's some of the suffering we bring on ourselves. 
you know, we, we create some of our own problems and, mm-hmm. and face some of our own hardship. You know, we create our own hardships. So I think when we try to keep rescuing a child that, that wants to be belligerent, that does not want to do what they're supposed to do, that, that, uh, and, and we don't enforce consequences and we don't let them feel consequences or we try to absorb the consequences for them. We do that in the name of either A, we want this is a good parent, Mm-hmm. This is what a good parent does. Right. A good parent doesn't let their child have pain and suffering. Well, no, that's, that can't be yeah. good. Well, what if it is good? What if it is important mm-hmm. that they learn to do that? So, you know, we, and, and the other piece of it is we're afraid of how we look as parents. Right. If our children are not doing then And that's a big one for a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, so if our children aren't happy, then we're not a good parent. What are the other parents thinking about us? Yes, yeah. so we, we're afraid we're going to get judged online or mm-hmm. get bullied on social media for that. So we want to step in and we'll make sure, I'm going to make sure my child gets the greatest grade possible on that science project. I'll do it for them. Well, you have not taught your child anything except that, you know, Suffering is just, you know, shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to in, inconvenience myself or experience pain in any way. Mom and dad will take care of that for me. You don't, want to, you don't want to be that parent. Let them feel their own consequences. Let them go through their own experiences. If they miss the bus, let them learn what it feels like to walk to school. And maybe they will just absolutely never want to sleep late again because I'd rather ride the bus than walk to school. So That's anyway, right. I can get down into that. I'm sorry, I've, I've stepped into several different. I've opened a lot of screens. <laughs> Some right here. So there, yeah, I've got fine. about five screens open. So I'll go ahead and uh, shut down. And let you so, have this. So back, for so. parents, um, again, this is a weekly resource to help you raise godly children. But remember, the goal of raising children is not to raise just children; it's to raise them into becoming adults. And by withholding the education piece that Pastor Tim is referring to, you're stunting their growth. I mean, our parents, they had to let us learn at some point too. And I know that there's definitely, especially in our community, there's this feeling that we have to perform as parents. We have to have the best, the brightest, the smartest dress, the most well-liked kids. And maybe there's more to life than that. Maybe there's more to life than just having the most polished children. And it's more about what would God want our children to look like and how can we steer them that way, allowing them to learn through adversity rather than rescuing them and just asking them, okay, what did you learn? Thanks for joining us this week. If you have Mm -hmm. any questions about Fruit Cove Baptist Church or our ministries, you can go to fruitcove.com. If you would like to interact with us, you can always email us at parentlife at fruitcove.com. And thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Tim, for joining us again. And listen, if you have any, if you disagree with what I just said, just remember, neil at (laughs) fruitcove.com. Be glad to take care of any complaints you have. Have a great day. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much (laughs) for joining us, and we'll see you next week.